Welcome to this video tutorial showing some simple 3D solids and what we're going to do here is create a simple flange. i am already opened a 3D design file and in this drawing I have some 2D graphics of the flange. I'm going to rotate myself into an isometric view and then go to solids modeling and then go to the solid by extrusion. I'm going to make sure it's set to ortho to find a distance and I want to have checked off, keep original, and use active attributes. I'm going to select the outer ring and raise that up. And then go back to a top rotation. Then what I'm going to do is take the uh, center hole and all the uh, bolt holes and create a selection set out of them. And then once I've got that selected, I'm going to use cut solids by curves. And options include for me to do both forward and back. I'm going to do both directions and I'm going to cut all the way through the element. Otherwise I could define the depth. I want to make sure key profile is checked off. I'm not going to need those again. So following my prompts in the lower left hand corner, I'm going to accept the cutting profiles. And then I need to identify the target solid. And then I need to accept the overall solution. Now those uh, bolt holes have been cut through the solid. I can rotate to an isometric view and change my uh, display style to an illustration with shadows to help illustrate that. If I wanted to do a little bit more with this flange, perhaps create a chamfered edge. I could create chamfered edge. Define a distance. I'll go 5 hundredths on this. All I need to do then is select the tangent surface and accept it, and it creates a chamfered edge on that flange. And do that for both the inside and the outside. Another example of creating a simple flange would be uh, where you have the example where the flange is not just an extrusion but actually a uh, revolution. So there's the uh, top view and the side view of what this flange looks like. So I took the graphics out of this area to make the revolution out of it. And again I'm going to take myself and rotate myself into isometric view create a selection set though of those elements and get it set up for um, to revolve around. So I've got the selection set there. I'm going to rotate by two points. I'm going to use my AccuDraw compass to make sure I get the correct rotation so it's up on end now. Clear my selection set and then I'm going to use the revolution tool solids by revolution. I want to do uh, points by AccuDraw because I'm going to use AccuDraw on this. I want to do a full 360 rotation and I want to turn off again, keep original. I won't need the profile. So what I need to do is identify the profile, identify the center point around uh, the revolution. Using AccuDraw I'm getting myself all the way around that uh, rotation. And then I can go back to or show you a uh, illustrated view again of what that looks like. I'm going to go back to a top rotation, get back to a wireframe display so I can grab the um, bolt holes from the other side of the flange, create a selection set of those bolt holes, deselect the outer ring and the inner ring, and then going to copy those over from the 2D flange to the 3D flange and then use the same tool cut solids by curves select that accept it identify the target solid and then accept the overall solution now that's completed I'm going to go to an isometric view again zoom in on it you can see how the bolt holes are cut through the solid now change my display style to a illustrate with, illustration with shadows. Again, if I wanted to dress up this flange at all, I could use the uh, chamfer tool and chamfer some of the edges. Picking the top one and the bottom one, getting those chamfered. And there you go. Taking a look at the solid, rotating it dynamically. This concludes our tutorial working with 3D solids. For more tips and tutorials, please visit our website envisioncad.com. Thanks for watching.